Hello Internet, welcome to our next Tome series. Uh, we have a little bit to talk about, um, but basically we're going to be playing as a higher, and we're going to be playing as a writhing one. Okay, and the reason we're playing as the writhing one and the higher is because we hit random, and that's what we got. Unfortunately, uh, so basically I recorded two episodes of the writhing one, and we died immediately. We... Uh, there's a quest in the in here that you immediately undertake as the writhing one, and despite being the first thing that you encounter in the game, that quest being at level one, uh, the enemy at the end was level seven, and we died. Uh, so we went to the world map, went into another dungeon, and immediately were killed by a random creature, and that was the end of that character. And uh, that was embarrassing, so... I took a break, you know, ate my dinner, whatnot, came back and was like, you know what, I can't put up a two-episode series on YouTube. I got to go back and try it again. So I went back and we recorded another three episodes where we left. We tried to level up very quickly and come back to deal with that first level quest, thinking that uh, like there's a time limit on it. But we thought like, oh, if we got to like level four, I think we could do it. And so we did that, and, and we went back, and we actually missed our window to go back because apparently you can't teleport after you kill a creature, which is mind-boggling. It's so stupid. I don't understand why. Let me get closer to my microphone. I don't understand why me killing a creature prevents me from teleporting. So we missed our window and failed the quest. And that pissed me off, and I was like, all right, I'm just going to take another break between episodes. We'll come back, and we'll just deal with it. And when I looked at my computer... I had kicked my microphone out of the computer. And so those three episodes were just completely blank audio that I somehow did not notice that I had no audio. In fact, I'm going to check that I have audio right now because I'm paranoid. Uh, I, do, I do have audio. So I, have to, I had to scrap those three episodes because they had no dialogue in them whatsoever. So for the th third time, I'm going to be playing as a writhing one. Higher, I mean, they just seem okay. They get a lot of pluses um, to start with. They get a lot of life per level, and they have a 0% experience penalty. So that seemed really good to me. Their tree does not really interest me very much. It seems We'll, we'll talk about it once we get in. And the writhing one seems like a super complicated class. Like, they have two resources that they have to balance. They have chaos orbs, and they have pustules. And I'm a little fuzzy on how they work and so we'll probably have to learn that over time or maybe we'll die right away again who knows um so we're going to be playing we were female as well so i think we'll just name ourselves uh so they're like a cthulhu class what do i what's a female name related to a cthulhu story all i can think of is i want to say his name is titus crow it's a book series by uh who wrote that? Was that the guy who wrote Necroscope and uh, Psychomech? Brian Lumley? Is that who I'm thinking of? Titus Crow? That's a guy's name, but we'll call her Titus. I think is fine. Adventure mode, normal mode, and the main story. Yes. Rathing one higher. Yes. Ooh, what's customized do? Oh! I didn't know we could do this. Well, I do like dark-haired women. Oh, that you're like bald up front, though? I don't like that. I can't actually see the dark hair on the background here. We'll just go with, that looks fine. Skin, I mean, I, I like alabaster beauties. I mean, what can I say? Oh, you're too... <laughs> okay, I mean skin tone, it doesn't really matter. Special, a big, really? That is uh, an interesting option to have. Okay, uh, <laughs> so we're dark haired now. Uh, okay, and we're going to just go into the game. Now, already a character with this name. Do you want to overwrite it? Did I name my other one Titus? I may have. Y yeah, let's just overwrite it. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I don't think I named her Tit. Did I name? Okay, uh, well, that's a little embarrassing. Um, so basically this class is a class that focuses on two main tr uh, stats. They need strength and they need magic. And I think at low levels, the strength is more valuable because we're almost exclusively a melee character. So I think we're going to dump our points into damage immediately. We want to be dealing as much damage as possible to increase our survivability. Next, we have a tentacle tree. Now, every time we make a melee attack that hits an enemy, we instantly, we automatically hit them also with our tentacle. We have one hand 
that has been replaced with a tentacle. This is a really good uh, thing, and it deals a lot of damage, and we really want to upgrade this tree as we get it. Next, we have the horrific body. Every class, every category here is based on us mutating a body part. So our horrific body, this is where the pustules come in. Uh, as you do things, you gain pustules. You then expend them to deal damage and heal yourself and some stuff like that. But this first ability is, the, is, is a shield ability, and we really, really want this because it will, again, increase our survivability. Then we have our foot tree. Uh, this one increases our movement speed, just flat out movement speed at all times. And it's also an activated ability that lets us jump pretty far in one direction. This seems pretty valuable. Speed in roguelikes is generally extremely OP. Next, we have controlled horrors. This allows us to summon creatures. Uh, they are locked in place. They're not able to move, but they are passive damage dealers. So they seem like something that is good. The first ones, uh, unfortunately, I don't really understand. Their health is very, very low. Uh, and because they can't move, they're of limited use to us. But the first two are summoned creatures. And then we have an ability that can turn an enemy into a horror and it clears the aggro of all enemies around us so it gives them a chance to potentially attack whatever character we turn into a horror. And then finally we get this basic just buffs to our, our creatures. Uh, we have the disfigured face tree. This allows us to lick in a cone uh, which causes blight damage over time. Not really sure what the rest of them do. I wasn't really interested in this tree when I played before. Um... We have the higher racial tree, which again is just like passive goodness. It, it seems very random, like it just benefits random areas of our character. Like the first one increases all damage and reduces all damage taken by 12% for 5 turns. Seems pretty good, uh, but it increasing it only reduces the cooldown. It does not increase the amount we can tank. Next, we get blindness immunity, maximum sight range, infravision, heightened senses range. Seems really passive. Uh, and at level 5, if we hit a target, we get telepathy to all creatures of that type in a radius of 15. So that seems like maybe occasionally useful, but not like something I'm going to prioritize. Uh, and here we get spell save and arcane resistance, and etc. It's just like random smattering of bonuses. Now also seems like an excellent time to mention that I'm very sick. I've had a cold for several days now. And unfortunately, I have to record Tome. If I don't record Tome, so my niece is coming to spend the night for the next day or two. And there's going to be a, a small child running around the house making lots of noise and doing childlike things. So I really won't be able to record this weekend. And if I don't put any time into Tome now, we're going to have like a... I would guess about a three day break between episodes and I'd really like to avoid that. So I am trying to make myself record. I, I have a sore throat. I'm very congested. You can probably hear it. My voice keeps cracking. Gonna do my best to stay hydrated. Gonna do my best to take a pause anytime my, my throat seizes up on me. And then between episodes, I will also be taking cough drops. Not gonna do that during the episode, although it would help significantly. Um, I feel like you don't wanna hear me clicking a cough drop around my mouth the whole time and additionally because i'm sick i'm also wheezing a little bit more than i usually do so just bear with me we have the basic combat trees which we had on Troman. i dropped my pen uh, we have the cunning survival tree which i've never really explored and then we have this demented tree now this is where the other resource comes in this is our chaos orbs whenever we deal trigger an insanity chaotic effect with a power higher than 20 or lower than negative 20 we get a chaos orb for 10 turns which increases our damage by 3%. What I don't understand is what that means. The higher, so basically, let's get out of this menu. Uh, oh, well, I mean, I guess we'll talk about that after. Welcome, yes, so welcome Titus. You are one of several like-minded individuals that delves into knowledge long lost and forgotten, seeking sanctuary from an outside hostile world to such activities. Delving into research within the forgotten and inactive fortress of Kroshker, uh, the reasons of pursuit differ among a myriad of topics. Some look to uncover knowledge, hailing back to the Age of Hayes, when beings immensely powerful walked Dial, while others explore the origins of themselves and other races. Regardless of the subject or method of research, no rules exist to constrain anyone in their approach. This has led to experimentation into what many would deem mad, 
and certainly forbidden among surface dwellers. If Kroshka were to be found, it would be almost certainly destroyed, therefore the only rules that truly exist in the sanctuary are that of secrecy and safeguarding the accrued knowledge that has been obtained therein. But today the sanctuary is threatened by a giant worm that is tunneling directly towards Kroshker. If nothing is done, it will collide with and destroy what remains of the ancient fortress. One idea to dealing with the worm is for someone to teleport inside it and make their way towards the worm brain cluster and destroy it. Alternatively, you consider leaving before the worm arrives and finding your own purpose in the outside world. As with all things here, nothing restrains you in the path you ultimately choose. The question is whether you will step into the portal to teleport into the worm, or leave now while it is safe, and, do, and to do so would let Kroshker be destroyed. And that's that quest that I said we launched into immediately and met a level 7 enemy, so we'll talk about that in a bit. Let's go back to talking about Chaos Orbs. Oh, please don't register. I'm uploading a video and my internet is terrible. Okay. Uh, oh. Oh, and we got the... Uh, yeah, we, we saw this in our last playthrough because it's a anniversary of the release of one of the uh, DLC packs. It gives us a demonic soul, which whenever we deal damage to an enemy once per turn, uh, it has a 15% chance of dealing fire damage equal to our spell power, which is pretty good because our character will have a decent spell power as we level up. Man, I already have 10 cuts to make in this episode because my throat is that bad. Really need cough drop. I took a hot bath thinking it would open my sinuses and, and clear me out, uh, and it mostly did, but I'm still feeling congested and my throat is killing me. So let's talk about chaos orbs. So we have this chaos. Oh, I'm sorry, it's insanity, it's not chaos. Basically, so we're at 100%, it decreases over time if I wait a few turns. Basically, this is our our mana, right? It's our version, it's our resource that we use to spend on abilities and we accrue over time. Like uh, when we melee attack something and our tentacle hits it, it generates 10% uh, insanity, so this meter will go up and then some of our abilities cost insanity and it will cause it to go down. Now, as an added effect of that, you'll see it says 44% chaotic. Basically, if we look in the lower right corner here, damage and cooldowns have a chance to increase or decrease by up to chaotic percent. That means if we hit an enemy for 10 damage right now, it has a chance of being up to 44% more or 44% less damage than 10. So, you know, we would deal like 5 damage or uh, 15 damage, right? It's a range that we could fall into. Similarly, cooldowns are affected by this as well. So if we pop our heal, I assume that this affects all cooldowns, not just natural class abilities. Uh, it, it could have its cooldown increased or decreased by up to 44%, which is, um, I mean, it can work in our favor, but the reality is that I hate randomness in my abilities in a game like this. I know in Angband, there were some like custom classes I had at one point that dealt a lot with chaotic magic. I know in, I know also in like Warlords Battlecry Three there was a chaos magic tree that did stuff, but it was random because it's chaotic and never liked that. Uh, and I believe that that is what this means. So it says when you have a chaotic effect with a power higher than twenty or lower than negative twenty, you gain a chaos orb. So if we pop our heal and it adjusts by negative forty four percent. Uh, that would trigger and we would get a Chaos Orb, I believe is what that means, which then increases our, all of our damage by 3% for as long as we have it, which, uh, please, please click, which uh, if we look here, it lasts for 10 turns, and we later in the tree get the ability to spend those Chaos Orbs to do different things. So like, you consume two chaos orbs, teleporting you in a general direction up to eight tiles away, which is like a, fa a controlled phase door. But we have to generate chaos orbs. Now, they only last for 10 turns, so they're only going to be appearing in, in combat, really, when we're using our abilities. And because of the random nature of them, I kind of feel like I should completely avoid that tree because we're never going to be able to control it. It's always going to be chaotic random chance whether we get one or not and we can't rely on them so i feel like spending points in that tree on something that's not reliable seems like a waste of, of points so let's level up uh we're gonna put a point in the shield 
because the shield is an extremely valuable ability. You'll see if we increase it, it increases the damage. The cooldown is 10 turns, but it only lasts for 7 turns unless they break it first. But this seems like a really good ability that I really want to be making use of. So we may level that up again. Uh, getting the cone would increase our ability. Currently, all we can do is melee. This deals damage in a cone when we land from the jump, but it's not really reliable. It's, I mean, it's something to engage or disengage combat. And unfortunately, the cooldown is 15, so we really can only use it the once. So we'll probably mostly be using it to engage ranged users. Some amount of mobility, you know, is important. I don't think we need to increase it again. Uh, it does increase our movement speed passively, but I don't think that that's... Something I want to put points into right now, at the very beginning of the character, I think survivability is the number one priority, so we'll double up on our shield. And then these generic points, again, this only reduces the cooldown. It doesn't increase the damage reduction or anything like that. So I don't think that we want to put points in that. We're going to be resting between combats anyway, and even at 37 turns, it's something we're only going to use once for combat. So I don't think it's really worth it. Same here, I do not want to put points into this. It does lower the chaotic requirement, which means we would get them more reliably. Maybe that gets down low enough to where you are generating them all the time, so maybe we should put points into them. We'll put one point into it, and then we'll reassess later, because I want to get to playing. We haven't played yet. Okay, so... As the lore pointed out, there's a giant worm coming to eat us. Now, currently, it seems to be on pause because we're in the sanctuary. Um, these guys are all vendors. They vend various things. So, like, this one sells tools for the sanctuary. This one sells weapons. Um, unfortunately, we only have zero gold. So, you know, zero gold is not... I mean, apparently, my guy's never worked a day in his life. What are you... Okay. Uh, so, the portal to the worm is over here. Man, this might be the most cuts I've ever put in a video. Um, <clears throat> so, we don't want to go into the worm. I think we want to teleport to the surface. We went into the worm, and the boss at the end, the thing we need to kill, is level 7. Which is not something we can take on at level 1. And when I cleared the worm before, we only got to level 2, and it kicked our ass. So, I think we go to the world map. You'll see, so let's rearrange our abilities a little bit. Let's, I don't know why this is over here. We definitely don't want that. Do we get 50 and cleanse one wound? Okay. Uh, and we have a shield ability, which we kind of want to be using constantly. We don't have any other activated abilities, just the jump. Chaos orbs is sustained, cooldown. We should have that on at all times, so it can generate the orbs. I don't see any sustain costs, so I don't see why I would ever turn that off. Uh, can we just auto use when of no, uh, there's no always on. I'm afraid auto use will toggle it on and off. That doesn't make sense. Auto use requires a turn to use. Yeah, no, let's let me control that, I guess. And then we have the ability to teleport back to the sanctuary. So we're going to head out to the world map. And you'll see we immediately get a, a status debuff here. Save Kroshker is still under threat from the Maggot. So in 999 turns, we have to go back and fight the Maggot. Now, I think that's enough time to get to level 3, maybe. Maybe we can get to level 4 once we start clearing the Maggot. The important thing to remember is that we cannot teleport after killing an enemy for a period of time. Additionally, this takes... Um... 40 turns in order to process. So when this gets down to about 950, we need to bail and go back to the sanctuary or we're going to miss the worm and it's going to destroy everything. So let's head into the ruins of Corpal. Okay, Repentant Thief. Uh, sure, I can do an escort quest. I do wish they gave experience. They only give points, but that's okay. Uh, because even the points will increase our survivability. Lead on, I will protect you. Where are you going? Inspect creature. Uh, no, that's the wrong button. Give order. Where's the portal? Close to the east. So let's head down here. Or let's head up here, I guess. Can we go through the doors? Which way? Skeletons uh, are tougher than most of the stuff. I, I did play... Oh, there's the portal. I did play this dungeon to level up. Oh, 
just empty gold everywhere. Okay, great. We got rid of the thief. Uh, quest done. Yes, get out of here. Oh, why is it so high? All the ones on our previous playthroughs were plus one and plus two. Why are you at plus five? That's so good. Unfortunately, there are skills we are never going to use. Dex might be good to bump. Increases our accuracy. Track. Sense foes around you in a radius of 12. Your melee and ranged attacks have a 20% chance to shred enemies, inflicting an additional 100% damage dealt as bleed over four turns. Seems really good. Passive. So it's just a passive anytime we make a melee attack. We have a 20% chance to deal an additional 100% damage over four turns. It seems incredible. I think we're going to take that. In sowing confusion and chaos. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to take... I mean, five decks is pretty good, but I think we want this. It just is a flat 20% chance to deal DOT damage on every single melee attack we make. And I assume the tentacle counts as a melee attack. I don't know why we, those rewards were so good. Every other time it's been pretty basic rewards. So we're going to try to level up as quickly as possible. This means engaging as many enemies as possible. Um, oh, we did read this before. This is about the alchemist who um, was accused of being a witch. And she was saved by people who pointed out that she's not a witch. And then she turned her life to persecuting magic users. Oh, we got chaos orbs. Plus 3% to all damage dealt. Okay. I want to see the lacerating strikes thing trigger how do we let's look at our character talents um lacerating strikes cunning slash scoundrel do we have that tree where is uh no this is survival okay my dogs are barking but i think it's quiet enough that you probably can't hear that and our goal is to rest as little as possible. We're going to be using our regen. I like regen on 8. Uh, as much as we can instead of resting because we don't want to burn turns. Definitely need to pop our heal. We also need to be using our shield. I am going to put this on 2 so that I can hit it easily. I don't like pushing combinations of buttons to trigger uh, skills. And the shield is extremely valuable. We should basically have that up at all times. Uh, I should really call the episode, but I don't want to because we took so long to do other things. We can wear this helm. Plus three armor, plus two decks. We really want to find as much equipment as we can so we're as equipped as possible when we go to fight the giant worm. Great. More enemies are good. This, again, is experience, which is what we're here to do. We're going to mostly ignore gold and things on the ground. We're going to focus... Almost exclusively on killing as many enemies as possible. We need to get our shield up basically in every combat. Our demonic soul triggered, which is great. We did level up. Let's level up quickly. Uh, unfortunately, we can't put any more points in our shield. We're going to go strength again because it's uh, going to increase our damage output, which is the most valuable thing at the moment. We're going to... Why don't we pick up... See, I picked these up in my other playthrough these cost insanity so we can't actually cast this until we've been in combat for a couple turns or we brought insanity with us from a previous combat and they seemed largely useless in my playthrough the enemies didn't target them the uh they barely did any damage at all but it's increased dps maybe we should get the tongue because it's a, a cone and we don't really have any aoe type damage 100% tentacle damage, which is not bad. Our tentacle currently does 13.4 to 18.8. I don't understand. Crit chance. It also deals dark damage, uses magic. I didn't know it used magic. I thought it was based on strength. Uh, maybe we should... No, we're going to keep boosting magic or uh, strength. Because as we level this up, it will enable us to wear heavier armor. Uh, and that requires strength. I think we'll take the tongue ability. So we have a cone attack. And we're going to put a point into this. Now this 
allows us to use shields, but we can't because then our tentacle, our offhand needs to be empty, otherwise our tentacle can't make attacks. But it does increase our armor, our armor hardiness, and the reduction to us taking critical hits is pretty valuable. We'll save that. We're going to look to level up at least one more time. We're going to look for the stairs pretty much immediately as well. The more we wander around, the less efficient our time is being spent. And we really need to be... See, like, that was a huge waste of time to come over here. There's no enemies here. We really need to find the other stairs or more enemies. Uh, because every moment we're just walking around is a wasted moment. Shielding rune? Uh, I don't think that that's worthwhile to replace... Let's head down. We're not going to waste time up here. I don't think the shielding rune is worth the replacing one of our healing abilities. And we already have a shield as a class ability. Really would like better armor than this. We really need to be putting things in these slots. Uh, so we'll sell everything. An alchemist, level 2. Okay, we'll try to save them as well for a bonus. Lead on, I will protect you. Where is your portal? Close to the wet. Oh, I literally can see it. Let's head over there immediately. Stop running. Okay. Uh, let's use our lick ability because they're all stacked up. Oh, it's a very narrow cone. Okay. Maybe that gets better over time. Let's wait for them to move up. I mean, they're not. They can't move up because this is actually a blocked square. Now we will. Is shield take a turn? It does not. So now we will lick them all. Man, this cone is weird. Uh, okay, we'll just lick what we can. And we'll bump attack. Try to kill the rats that are going after the alchemist. We're taking a lot of damage. Let's lick again. So many mice. Uh, but this is really good because we need that experience. Let's pop our shield again. Uh, we should be able to make level 3, I would think, with the density of enemies we're seeing. And we'll go ahead and bump them all to death. And let's see if we can get you to the portal before we get overwhelmed again. Okay. Head to the port giant. Yeah, okay. Looks like she zapped it with fireball or something. A fireball or something. Sorry, my voice is just killing me. Man, really need a cough drop. Level 2 complete. Once again, plus fives. I, I don't know why we're getting this. It's so good. Uh, and it improves our magic, which is incredibly valuable to get five points in magic. Channel staff. Did I put this on easy by mistake or something? I don't know why we're getting so many rewards. Uh, maybe it's a new patch. I think I did update. I think there was a new patch. Uh, we can learn stone touch, which we had on our alchemist, which is pretty good. Uh, staff stuff I'm not interested in. Stone alchemy, I, I mean, isn't that the one that lets you upgrade... Control over stone and gems. Yeah, it's not going to help us. Staff combat also not going to help us. Stone touch is pretty good. Paralyzes an enemy for three turns. Uh, I don't think we... I think we want just five magic. So good. That's so good. Uh, so we're going to call the episode. I think I really need a cough drop. I'm so sorry. I'm sure with editing... <clears throat> I'm sure with the editing it won't be super bad, but I'm sure you can tell that I'm hoarse and whatnot. Uh, and I have to edit out literally about 17 different cuts of me struggling. I'm going to eat a cough drop. We're going to come back and do one more episode. And if that doesn't go well, I'll call it a day. So you won't have to deal with that uh, for much longer. Also, I wanted to point out I did fix my recording issues. As far as I know, this should be recording perfectly. Uh, and I'm very happy about that. So... Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Sorry about the voice.